Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome on board. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute troglodyte. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. For today's video, we are doing a Fluffle Deck profile. That's right, in 2021, people are still trying to make this deck work. Unfortunately, it does lose to just about every fucking hand trap in the game. However, if you like a glass cannon, and everyone knows that I do, then this might be the good kind of deck for yourself. This is just no nonsense. You're either going to lose really quick because the deck is not that great, or you're going to win instantly because the deck does one thing very well, and that is OTK. Now, for people who do play on a budget and they want to be able to earn some cheeky wins that they probably have no right to, this might be the kind of deck that you want to play. Or maybe alternatively, you're one of those people who likes to go to regionals or even the locals and have 10 minute rounds. Well, if you fit either of those descriptions, then this may be the kind of deck that you'll like. The deck, once again, is very budget friendly, so can be appealing to people who are relatively new to the game, who don't necessarily want to get into those solitaire games, and they just want to go ahead and try and obliterate their opponent as quickly as possible. Well, if you feel you fit any of those descriptions, then this may be a good video for you. Now, if you are watching today's video and you're feeling inspired to go pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, or even some Pokemon ones for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There'll be a link down in the description. If you go ahead and use that exclusive link, courtesy of yours truly, you'll go ahead and get yourself a nice discount on their eBay store. But anyway, I think I've waffled on enough for one day. Let's get stuck in to the video. Okay, so before we get started, let me first apologise about any crazy noise in the background, particularly if you hear a loud whirring sound. My laptop sounds like it's going to fucking take off whenever I start recording these videos. There's something about Edo Pro that just sends it absolutely up the fucking wall. Genuinely, it doesn't even sound this loud when I'm actually rendering these videos, which is insane, because that's what uses all of the power of the machine. But I digress, let me get stuck in to the video for you. So with this particular build, as a quick overview, of course, this is being done on a budget. There are a couple of cards that we can discuss that aren't particularly budget friendly, but for the most part it is. There's also a couple of cards that I'd recommend you could consider trying to run in here, and we'll go through all of that at the end of the video. Now, the main aim here, of course, is to be as consistent as possible. And with this build, I believe it is pretty consistent. I mean, you really just want to get through those fusion combos as quickly as possible, and this basically facilitates that as much as it can. Of course, this deck more or less just relies on going second, but it does have one or two going first plays, which are obviously a little bit nicer, something you wouldn't normally have access to, so the deck has wised up in that respect. Unfortunately, the deck has lost access to VFD, which is something it was making before. There are some cards, again, that you can include that if you wanted to play down that line, you can go ahead and do that, but I've chosen not to go down that route in this particular build. So Fluffle Dog, triple of, pretty much self-explanatory, it just searches anything that you really need in the deck. Fluffle Penguin, of course, allows you to just dig deeper into the deck, which is the main benefit of it and of course being able to special summon an extra body on board is a nice touch this can also help you go into bahamut shark which can be a really good going first play fluffle dolphin is really really good for being able to recur your resources this is one of the newer bits of support that we've of course seen come out in i think it's the last year or so i remember covering these when we saw them leaked out of the ocg but of course one of those cards i think two of is plenty but definitely a card that you want in the deck and of course it can help you go into those bahamut shark plays which of course can get you into toad fluffle bear is just a great utility card of course being able to get you access to toy vendor as quickly as possible and much the same for polly i think a three of it's mandatory fluffle wings is a really really cool card to have in here but again i think two is plenty for how we want to build a deck i've seen some play in three it's just really not necessary to play at three and i really don't think one is enough although i'd prefer one over three quite frankly uh, but i think two is the sweet spot for this and that that's exactly why we're playing it at the number we are Fluffle Owl is great, of course it allows you to get into Polly very quickly, but also the fact that it can allow you to get further into your fusions, which is a really nice touch. Some decks don't run this, and it's definitely a bit of an optional one, but I found it come up really clutch on the odd occasion. We then move on to our Edge Imp cards, I think this package is pretty much set. Triple Edge Imp Chain is perfect, Double Scythe is absolutely great, and just a single copy of Sabres is really all you need. We then move on to our hand traps, of course I'm playing the two best ones in the game at the moment, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. Mandatory in pretty much any deck at the moment that you can fit it into. Certainly the most generic negate 
of all the options that you can have in your hand. And then, of course, you've got Gamma and Driver, which are incredibly strong at the moment. The beauty with this, of course, is that these are very, very budget-friendly as well. So if you are looking to play this on a budget, these are certainly cards that you should have easy access to and are incredibly powerful in the current game. It's also worth noting there are other good hand traps as well, considering we're going second. You may want to run the likes of Nibiru in here, um, which is easy enough to deal with a token, especially with how big the cards can get in this deck. But honestly, I think this is perfectly fine as is. We then have triple copies of Toy Vendor, one of the best cards in the deck. Absolutely, you want to play three copies of this. Triple copies of Foolish Burial Goods. This is, of course, to send our Toy Vendor, or of course, we can send our Fright for Repair if we want to do that. We have a single copy of Instant Fusion. This is to get our sheep. You can run additional Instant Fusion targets if you want. This is a little bit harder to gain access to than it would be normally, but of course, you can run the likes of uh, Millennium Eyes Restrict, uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict, and, you know, there's a handful of other cards that you can go for if you really want to go down that route. This is entirely optional but I found it really really handy it's worked nicely for me at least in testing triple copies of polymerization uh, this deck absolutely needs to max out on copies of this so triple copies is what we're playing triple copies of super poly so we can be absolutely ignorant of our opponent which is great uh, so three of these is absolutely fantastic especially against dragon link boards and the like Triple copies of Patchwork, we didn't wait fucking ages for it to come out not to play it. Triple copies, mandatory. And a single copy of Fright for Repair is perfectly plenty. I really don't think you need more copies of this. We then move on to the extra deck, Frightful Well, absolutely fantastic. This is one of the ways that people were making VFD before. Of course, VFD now being banned. Uh, what's the card that you can make with it? The, uh, it looks like a green deer fucking thing. I don't know. Anyway, I can't remember his name at the moment, but that's the option you can run instead if you really want to. But honestly, I think that these two on their own is fine. You really don't need that rank nine as well. This is the one you're most commonly going to go into, so just keep that in mind. Some people like to play three copies. I think the two is perfectly fine. Double copies of Sabretooth, absolutely fine in my opinion. Much the same for Fry for Tiger. You could potentially run one of these if you really wanted to, but I think two and two is quite nice. A single copy of Kraken is more than enough. We need the extra deck space not to run multiple copies of the likes of this. And much the same for Wolf. Wolf is just okay utility, but it doesn't come up all that often, at least I've found. Fry for Sheep largely is just an instant fusion target, which of course allows us to get easier into what some of our other fusions and some of our other lines of play. It works absolutely fine for me, at least in testing. It doesn't come up an awful lot, but it's an okay option to have available to you. We have a single copy of Mud Dragon of the Swamp and a single copy of Starving Venom. These are our super poly targets. You could also run Predaplant, Chimera, Reflesia, whatever I think it's called. Um, because we're running a lot of fusions, you can definitely make a much more big advantage of that. But I think that these are perfectly fine as they are. We're on a single copy of Cross Sheep. It's a fusion based deck, so what's not to like about that? A single copy of Predaplant, Vert, Anaconda. I think this is the one card that you can't really skimp out on. This deck uses fusion so much that this is absolutely mandatory. Run a single copy of Bahamut Shark. This basically just gets us access to Toad, but it's also quite easy to make with Dolphin and with our Penguin in the deck. And onto our side decks. So the cards here, of course, are not cards that we're mentioning for the side deck for actual side decking purposes. These are just cards that you could include if you have access to them or the space to include them. We've got Cyframe Lord Omega, of course, are running the Cyframe package, and that's much the same for Lambda. It just allows you to use them when going first if you've already started to create a board. And then finally, the mention here, of course, is Dr Dragoon. Dragoon is absolutely insane and, of course, gives this deck a going first play. It may not be desirable to have this main deck. You could potentially side this in if you really wanted to, especially if you you know you're going to be forced to go first or of course you can omit the likes of the super poly package and fit this in instead and that my friends is all for today's video you're one of the little weirdos who's made it to the end of the video and by virtue of that fact hopefully you've liked it enough to have hit subscribe and the notification bell or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away well regardless of which one of those camps you fall into thank you very much for being here i do really appreciate it now, if you've made it this far, and it's not just tech profiles that you're looking for, we do a wide array of other stuff over time. Unfortunately, it's a bit limited at the moment with the thing that's going on in the world, but normally we have locals vlogs, event vlogs, combo tutorials, how to play videos, face-to-face -face tech profiles, which are way better than this sort of thing, I definitely admit. And occasionally we'll sprinkle in some discussion content along the way, amongst other things. Now, if you are watching today's video and there is something you would like to see on the channel that you haven't seen before, or maybe a deck profile you'd like covered, definitely reach out and let me know. You can find all of my social media links in the description, and they are the best way to get hold of me. Also, I do take the time to read as many of the YouTube comments as I possibly can, so definitely feel free to leave your opinions down there. Unless, of course, they're absolute bollocks opinions, in which case, keep them to yourself. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here and I'll see you in the next one. 
This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.